So this is a little cautionary tale from music history for music makers venturing into video. But one also, it's not, it's not all bad news, it's one also that I think uh, offers some thoughts on how best to proceed as music makers, how to abandon the phony search for authenticity in music video and make genuinely artificial visual accompaniments for the music that we make. Yeah. I will illustrate with excerpts of music turned into GIFs because GIFs do for video exactly what loops do for music. They expose its shortcomings and realize its potential at the same time. <laughs> There's bad news mixed with good news in this, in this presentation. For example, George Michael is dead, but his hair is perfect. Look at that. You know what this is, right? This is, this is from the video for Careless Whisper. This hair, it's, it's, uh, it's abundant but not unruly. It's perfectly styled, but it doesn't look overstyled. Oh no. It has volume, it has highlights. Most of all though, I mean, I'm just, I don't know why I'm telling you all these things you, you can see. That's the whole point of video. The most important, it's most important characteristic, I would say, is that it looks like George Michael's hair. And that, after all, is its job here. For George Michael's performance to register as real for the video audience, his hair must likewise be authentic. That's why, incidentally, the singer canceled the first day of this video's shoot and walked off the set because the hair just not, was not quite right yet, was not yet fully him. Now, this might be a little bit hard to relate to. You and I don't have this problem, or, or not exactly. Uh, we style our hair, yes, according to the occasion, and we judge the success of our efforts in mirrors and in shop windows and phone screens. But in general, our medium is reality. So we know that whatever we do to our hair, short of covering it with a wig, it will at least be understood that this is our hair, that it is our real hair. George Michael was working in the early days of a much less forgiving medium, music video, in which nothing looked real and which, unless you went to a great deal of trouble to make it so. Let me give you another example. This is an unsurprising statement. Women are real. That is a real thing that exists in the world. But if you want to show a woman in a music video, you can't just, you know, um, point a camera at a person who identifies as female and hope that things will work out. Oh no, I'm gonna do something I never thought I would do here and paraphrase video music pioneers Duran Duran and that episode of The Simpsons where a movie producer comes, movie production comes to Springfield all at the same time and say that girls don't look like girls on film, you have to use Courtney Cox. Um, in the 1970s, Bruce Springsteen used to do a thing at his concerts where he invited an ordinary young woman from the audience to dance with him on stage. That was just a thing he did, right? It was, it was spontaneous and charming, and most of all, it was real. In 1984, after, after, um, after Bruce Springsteen became a big star, and it was, he was made to understood by his manager, John Landau, that he had better make videos that authentically represented himself, the director, Brian De Palma, was hired to make a video for Bruce Springsteen's Dancing in the Dark single. It was decided that the video would show Springsteen playing a show and that at the show he would do the thing with the girl and that the girl would be played by a model slash actress named Courtney Cox, better known to us today as Monica from Friends. Um, and in the finished product here, we see him holding out his hand. The camera catches this, this uh, look of surprise and delight dawning on Courtney Cox's face, but she knows. And, and we know that she knows, right? She's a model actress doing her job, and the job here is nothing less than the, than the construction of Bruce Springsteen as a real human being. This, above all, must be faked before it can register as real. Jesus. <laughs> what, what is going on here? To answer, we have to answer this question, we have to turn to, to, um, to French philosophers. Only French philosophers can help us here. Media theorist and philosopher Roland Barthes declared in, in 1966 that what the bourgeois public mostly wants from its entertainment is, and I quote, signs that do not look like signs. In other words, we want our stars, the people we admire, our heroes, to be real, but we'll be satisfied only when this reality is constructed well enough that we can't see the joins. I think he's right. Especially after spending some time, as I did, with the, the early work of Tori Amos, did you know this Tori Amos? Before she was Tori Amos, she was in a, in a band that was called Why Can't Tori Read um, here in Los Angeles. Uh, they, they worked pretty hard to make it. They made songs and they also made videos. Oh boy, did they make videos. Um, this is from one of them. It's called The Big Picture. It came out in 1987. It didn't work. Um, it, did, it failed to make Tori Amos a big star. And, 
uh, and or rather failed to make Why Can't Tori Read a big famous band. And according to her, later telling the story, it was because it was too artificial. And I kind of see what she means. Fake car, fake hair, fake ladder, fake guy, fake street, fake piano, fake. She went back to the drawing board and resolved to be herself next time. Uh, this is the 1992 version of Tori Amos, the one we're much more familiar with, seen in the video for Silent All These Years. Um, in this, she seemed far more realistic to herself, to her management, and to the many, many people who liked and bought her records and requested this song on MTV. Uh, did that mean that there was no artifice involved or less artis artifice involved in making this thing? I would go out on a limb here and say no. I think that whether you rent a street or a photographer's studio, or whether you decide to hire a car or hire a box, these are all aesthetic choices made by somebody somewhere. You know. Um, I think it just means that the artifice, which in this case means a plain white set, wood tones, dyed slip dress, and natural look makeup, had worked, had registered as real with people who like to think they know the difference, who want real art by real artists, don't we all? I think Sinead O'Connor kind of started this reality revolt, actually, in music video. Um, this is nothing compares to you. Uh, at the end of the 80s, this seemed very important. It seemed very important for an artist to appear so unadorned, so direct, it makes me think of Walt Whitman you know, when he was talking about style. He said, I have no style. You know, I put no curtain between what I want to express and what you receive. There's no decoration. It comes directly from me to you. That's what this video is about, really. It's a revolt against the style decade and haircut bands. More about that later. But did it have less style than videos by Duran Duran or Motley Crue? Is a shaved head no hairstyle? or a no hair style. <laughs> there was a time when pop artists didn't have to think about this stuff quite so much. And that time can be pretty much dated pretty precisely to the period before the advent of MTV in the early 80s. This is kind of amazing, but, but it, I mean, and it would be an exaggeration to say that, that before MTV music was heard and not seen, but it certainly wasn't seen as much and not in quite the same way. I was really surprised when I learned this, but back in the 70s, serious artists, especially rock artists, were discouraged from appearing on television. And even pop acts had their TV appearances carefully rationed out by their managers and agents so as not to overexpose the artist. And most of these appearances were seen only once or twice if fans were lucky. The media theorist Lawrence Grossberg has argued that in these pre-MTV times, audiences went looking for proof of the artist's realness only in sound and certain key pockets of music culture regarded the visual realm with suspicion, if not outright contempt. For example, around here in this part of the world in the 1970s, the Laurel Canyon Cognoscenti, artists like Jackson Brown, Joni Mitchell, and the members of the Eagles used the phrase, the costume people, as a verbal shorthand for every, everything they believed to be wrong with rock music. Just get up there and play, sorry, and I quote, from a guy who used to be in the Eagles. Just get up there in your jeans, they said, and play your music. Sounds awful, doesn't it? 10 years later, two new shorthand put downs into the rock lexicon. Tellingly, hair metal was a catch all term for party bands that ruled Los Angeles during the 1980s Motley Crue, Rat, Warrant, Poison. Haircut bands referred mostly to English synth pop groups from earlier in the decade, like Duran Duran and the Human League, and Wham, the act that launched George Michael's career, not coincidentally. Uh, these phrases simply didn't imply that the groups had remarkable hair, although they truly did. They were a way of saying that the groups owed their success mostly, if not solely, to their remarkable hair. And that this in turn spoke of something truly rotten in the state of music. It gave notice of what Lawrence Grossberg would later would describe as a changing ratio of sight to sound in popular music from the 80s onwards. After Thriller, the release of a song more or less necessitated that a video must be made and that the artist must appear in the video must represent themselves, a brand new face as George Michael would later sing, for the boys at MTV, and we still live his nightmare now. A brand new face for the boys at MTV. It was not as easy as it seemed. Some people are great at music, but can't do their hair or dance or strike a convincing pose to save their lives. But in the new cultural economy of the 80s, an economy we still live with, it was precisely these things that mattered most, since videos broke songs. The costume people, it seemed, had had their revenge, and the former members of the Eagles would just have to suck it up, get their hair and makeup done, and do videos, which, to be fair, they did pretty well. Thank you.